Hey guys, welcome back. We'll continue with the book Cracking Codes with Python. And in this video, we are learning about frequency analysis, which we can use to break the Visionaire cipher. Let's get right into it. In the last episode, we covered the Visionaire cipher. The Visionaire cipher is very secure and cannot be hacked easily. But one way we can break it is by using frequency analysis. And frequency analysis is all about determining how often certain letters are being used within words. To follow along, you can head over to inventwithpython.com. The link is also in the description down below. So to determine the frequency of a certain letter appearing in a word, let's first cover what frequency is all about. For instance, if we flip a coin, it will either show heads or tails. And in this case, heads and tails would show up half of the time. So therefore, the frequency of heads and tails should be exactly the same. If we instead look at English words, then we can identify certain letters that occur more frequently than other letters. So in fact, the letters E, T, A and O appear most frequently in English words, and letters such as J, X, Q and Z appear less frequently in English. In fact, let's have a look at this chart here, which displays the different letters of the alphabet and their occurrence in English language words. So here we can see that E occurs most often, followed by T and A. Rather than displaying this alphabetically, we can also sort it based on their occurrence. So if we take a look at that, we can see which letters appear most frequently in typical English text. So here we have E, T, A and O at the beginning as the most frequently occurring letters. And here at the end we have J, X, Q and Z, which appear much less frequently than the letters at the beginning. And now since we know that certain letters appear more often typically, we can use that as a basis to brute force each sub K in the Visionaire cipher. So if we take the example from the last episode, where we used the Visionaire cipher with the sub key pizza, we would need 26 to the power of five, so around 11.8 million keys that we need to brute force and evaluate. But if we can brute force each subkey at a time, then we only need to try out 26 possibilities for each key. So rather than having to try out 26 to the power of five different possible keys, we just need to try out 26 times five different subkeys, which is just 133 options we need to check. And so that makes it much more realistic for us to break a message encrypted with a Visionaire cipher. So the way we're going to go about this is we are going to use an algorithm that simply orders the letters in a string by highest frequency to lowest frequency. So we would start with those letters E, T, A and O. And then on the other side, we have those least frequently occurring letters such as X, Q or Z. And to do that, we are going to calculate a frequency match score for ciphertext. And we start with a score of zero. And then we add a point to that score each time one of the most frequent English letters, such as E, T, A or O, appears. And we're also going to add a point to the score each time one of the least frequent letters, such as J, X or Q, appears. And so we're going to get back a score between zero, if they are completely different letters that are unlike the letters used in English words, or it could have a value of 12. That means the string's letter frequency is identical to that of regular English, and the value of 12 is calculated because we take a look at the six most frequently appearing letters and then also the six least frequently occurring letters. So let's have a look at an example. Here we have a ciphertext and we can use it to calculate the frequency match score of the message that is encrypted here. So in this case, the message is encrypted using the simple substitution cipher. And if we count all the different letters here and we then order them by which occur most frequently, we will get back this result. So A occurs the most frequent, followed by S, R, X, and so on and so forth. And now we can compare that to the frequency that we would get when we look at typical English text. So here's a comparison of those two. Here we can see the pattern we would see in typical English text. So again, E most frequent, followed by T, A, O, and so on and so forth. And then here we have the least frequently used letters, V, K, J, X, Q, and Z. And if you compare that to the frequency that we get with the ciphertext up here, then we can see that we have some matches. So A and I occur in the ciphertext most frequently, and they match 
two out of the six most frequently used letters of English. And then in terms of the least frequently used letters, we have those three ones here. So we would have five matches. And therefore out of a possible score from zero to 12, we get a score of five in this case. And in general, a ciphertext encrypted using the simple substitution cipher won't have a very high frequency match score because the plain text letters are substituted one for one with cipher letters. For example, if we take a letter such as T, which is one of the most frequently occurring letters in English, and we swap it with, for instance, J, using the substitution cipher, which is one of the least frequently occurring letters in English words, then we would in general just have a much lower score because in all places where we used T before, we're now going to use J, and therefore, of course, our score is going to be a lot lower. But let's take a look at another example. Let's say we are encrypting a message using the transposition cipher. Here's such an example. So again, we would count the number of characters that occur here to determine the frequency. And in this case, we are going to get this result back. So E, I, S, N, and so on and so forth. Now, if we compare this to the frequency of English, we can see we have more matches. So in fact, we have three letters of our ciphertext that match the most frequent letters in English. And we have a total of five different letters that occur least frequently in our ciphertext compared to six letters in typical English text. So therefore we have a total of nine matches compared to the five matches we saw before with a simple substitution cipher. So when we work with a transposition cipher, we generally would have a much higher score. And the reason is that other than the simple substitution cipher, the transposition cipher uses the same letters found in the original plain text, but arranges them in a different order. And therefore the frequency of each letter generally remains the same. So to hex the visionaire cipher, we are going to decrypt the different sub keys individually. So in the example of the key being pizza, for instance, we would start with P, then I, and so on and so forth. And so we are going to decrypt the letters encrypted with the one sub key and then perform frequency analysis, as we just saw, to determine which decrypted ciphertext produces letter frequency that most closely matches that of regular English. And then we are going to repeat the same steps for the other different subkeys. And for now, we are going to assume that we know the length of the key. Actually, in the next episode, we're going to cover how we can determine the key length. So let's get started and let's write a program to perform our frequency analysis. For that, we can switch over to idle and then create a new file. And we're going to save that as frequencyanalysis.py. And inside of this file, we're going to start out by defining the most frequently occurring letters in typical English text. So again, we have E, T, A, and O occurring most often, and then X, Q, and Z occurring the least often. We are also creating a second constant with our letters from A all the way up to Z. And then we define our first function, get letter count. And get letter count takes in a message as an argument. And then we are defining a dictionary with all the different letters of the alphabet as a key. And then the value is going to be set to zero. And later on, we are going to use that when we analyze certain messages. And we are going to count the occurrence of each letter and then increase the value here accordingly. Next up, we're going to loop through all the different letters in our message. And to make it easier for us, we are calling upper on message so that we are only dealing with uppercase letters. Next up, we're checking if it's actually a valid letter included in our letters constant here. And if that's the case, then we're going to pass the letter as a key to letter count, our dictionary we defined, and we're going to increase its value by one. So for instance, if we have the letter A, then we're going to increase the value associated with the key A by one. So from zero to one, for instance. And then we're going to return that letter count dictionary. So let's have a look at that function in action. And for that, we're going to use a message. And this is just some text that we are working with, which is actually in a Wikipedia entry about Alan Turing. So once we set up that message, let's actually import our module. And then we can go ahead and we can call the function get letter count, which we just defined, passing the message string here as an argument to it. And now based on the return value, we can see that in this text up here, the letter A occurred 135 times, so quite frequently. And the letter E occurred even more often, 196 times, while for example, the letter X only occurred three times. So that's a good starting point, but of course we want to be able to actually order the frequency of the letters that we see so that the most often occurring letters are actually at the beginning. 
and the least often occurring letters are at the very end. And for that we can define our getFrequencyOrder function, which is going to return a string of the alphabet letters arranged in order of most frequently occurring in the message parameter. And to start out we are actually going to use our getLetterCount function that we just defined, passing the message as an argument to it and storing the returned dictionary in the variable letter to frequency. Next up we are setting up an empty dictionary and then we are going to loop over each letter in the alphabet and then we are checking if the value associated with a certain letter, so for example a value of 120 for the letter A, is not yet included in our new dictionary frequency to letter. Then we are going to add a new key value pair to frequency to letter and this time the key is going to the number of occurrences, for example 120 and the value is going to be the specific letter, so A. And if instead the number of occurrences is already included in the frequency to letter dictionary, then we're going to append the specific letter to that same key. So for instance, if we have a key of 120 for the letter A, and then we also notice that E, for example, has the same number, then the value would be a list with the values of A and E. And to give an example for that, here is what we would, for example, get returned. So for example, we would first have a value of 1 for the letter Z, and on the other hand, a value of 122 for the letter N. And if there are some letters that have the same number of occurrences, for example 30, in this case, then we would have, in this case, B and W as a list of the associated value. Next up, we're going to put each list of letters in the reverse order of the most frequent occurrence and then we're going to convert it to a string. So for that we're going to loop over each entry in our new frequency to letter dictionary and we're going to sort each value of each entry by reverse order using the key etaoin which is the constant we defined at the beginning and calling find on it. And after that we're going to join this together to get back a string. Next up we're going to convert the frequency to letter dictionary to a list of tuple pairs, so key and values and then sorting them. So for that we are going to call items on frequency to letters and then turn it into a list and store it in the variable frequency pairs. Next up we're going to sort it, passing as a key get item at index 0 and then sorting it in reverse order. And now that the letters are ordered by frequency, we're going to extract all the letters for the final string. So for that we are going to define an empty list frequency order and we're going to loop over all the different tuples in frequency pairs and we're going to take the second value of each tuple and append it to frequency order. And since we ordered the tuples before by frequency we can be sure that it's in the correct order and then the last step is to join that together to get a string and returning that string. So let's see that function in action. So we're going to call that function again passing the same message to it and here we get back a string with the different letters ordered from most frequent occurrence to least frequent occurrence. And just to be sure that the output is correct, we could compare the order to the actual values that we have associated with each letter. So we can see that E is the first letter and that indeed matches our dictionary here because E occurs most often with a frequency of 196. T is in second place with 140. Then we have I which occurs 139 times and then we have A with 135 times. And on the opposite end, we have for example the letter Z that occurs just one time. And if we double check, we can actually see that's the correct order. So now we got back the frequency order of our message here. Now there's only one step left. We need to compare the order in which the letters occurred in our message to the actual frequency that we would have in most English texts. And for that, of course, we need to start out with our individual frequency order for the message. For that, we are going to call get frequency order, passing the message to it, just as we did before. And that string is going to be stored in frequency order. And next up, we are defining our match score. We initially set it to zero. And then we need to determine how many matches we actually have for the six most common letters and for the six least common letters. And for that, we can take our constant ETAOIN, which of course is the order in which letters occur most frequently in regular English text and we're going to just have a look at the first six letters. So as we loop over each letter in those first six entries, we're going to check if this letter is actually in the first six entries of our frequency order string and if it is, we're going to increase the match score by one. So we can have a maximum score of six for this 
And next up we're going to then loop over the uncommon letters. So we take a look at the last six entries in our constant here. And then for each time this actually matches the last six letters in our frequency order string, we're going to increase the match score again by one. So we can have a total of six for the most common letters and again a total score of six for the least common letters. So in total we could have a maximum score of 12. And then we're going to return the match score. So let's head over to idle and before we actually call this function, let's first have a look at the constant ETAOIN, which of course displays the frequency. So this is the frequency which represent most English text. So and if we compare for example the first six most common occurrences here to what we got in our frequency analysis of our text, we can actually see that they are in a different order but the first six occurrences are actually the same as the first six occurrences in our English text. So we would get a total score of six. And if we take a look at the six letters that occur least frequently and we compare that to our frequency up here, we can see again the order is swapped but we have basically the same entries here. So we would get a very high score and of course it makes sense because we actually have English text. So we would assume that we would get a very high score. So let's actually call our English frequency match score function again passing the message to it. And here we can see that we indeed get a perfect score of 12 because again the first six occurrences here of the letters, the most frequent occurrences, are actually the same letters as in typical English text. They are swapped around a little bit but it's still the six same letters. And the same is true for the six letters with the least frequency. They actually are also the same as for regular English text, just their order is swapped around. And again it makes sense because our message was actually English text, so therefore we would assume a perfect match or a very close to perfect match. And getting back that match score will help us a lot once we are trying to brute force and break the Visionaire cipher. So let's have a look at the practice questions. And the first question is what is frequency analysis? So frequency analysis is all about counting the frequency of letters in a ciphertext in a message that we look at. And we are basically analyzing which letters occur most frequently and we are comparing that to what we would expect for a regular English text. What are the six most commonly used letters in English? So we now based on our frequency chart that the six most commonly used letters in English are E, T, A, O, I and N. What does the spam variable contain after you run the following code? So here we define a list spam with four different values and then we call sort on spam and we specify that we want to set reverse to true. So we are going to sort it not in ascending so, but in descending order. So based on that we should get back a list with the highest value first, eight, then six, then four and then two. And let's head over to idle to verify that. So we can first specify our list and then we can sort our list passing reverse is set to true as an argument. And if we now have a look at spam again, we can indeed see that the entries are ordered but in reverse order. The last question is, if the spam variable up here contains a dictionary, how can you get a list value of the keys in the dictionary? So to answer that, let's, let's head over to idle again and let's assume spam was not a list as up here but instead was a dictionary and here we have different keys and different values associated with it. So that again could be the result of our frequency analysis here, the occurrence of a certain letter and then of course the associated letter as a value. So if we have that dictionary here, we could call keys on spam and this is going to give us back the dictionary keys. And if we want to get those dictionary keys as a list, we still need to make sure that we turn that result into a list. So therefore we are going to use the list function pass spam.keys as an argument to it and as we run that we can see we get the exact same list back as we defined up here. So that's a way how far we can turn a dictionary, specifically the keys of a dictionary, into a list. We covered how we can write a frequency analysis module. We're going to use that module in the next video in order to break the Virginia cipher. Feel free to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date and see you guys in the next video.